Hello, this is John Kowalski from Variable and the Color Me System. Uh, we're doing a quick walkthrough um, of the features and benefits of the new CMG uh, Color Muse app and uh, color referencing system. So first off, uh, I take it you've downloaded the app from the CMG webpage, uh, available in both iOS or Android platforms, and you'll see my screen here, the CMG app. We're gonna launch that and uh, walk through it here. Um, it's a great uh, little device here. Um, first off, let's talk about some navigation and, and do some things. Uh, I'm gonna show you the app um, before connecting to the device because some of you may not have devices yet. Um, on the app, you'll see uh, the default library is all color marketing group libraries. And this contains all uh, forecast and trend libraries, um, uh, current and some historical. We're currently working on building the uh, remainder of the historical. So uh, one of the benefits of our system is as we add colors, add libraries, whenever you launch the app, uh, what it does, it uh, communicates with our cloud server and pulls down the latest and greatest information. Um, so your app and libraries are always updated every time you launch. In the app itself, uh, this currently here, uh, I'm demonstrating this on an iOS version, um, the navigation in the upper right hand corner, you'll see the nine little uh, squares here. This uh, really shows your view uh, and the functions there. We're currently in a grid mode that shows um, small thumbnails of all of uh, you know the colors within a search or within a library. Uh, we haven't done any searches yet, so it just pulls up the default uh, library, which is all the color marketing group uh, forecasts. So I'm going to switch it to the list mode, and here you'll see um, you know a, a scrolling list here. I can scroll um, up and down. Uh, this gives me a list view. To click on the details of it, I can click back on this uh, icon in the upper right hand corner, or I can simply just click on a color. And what it does, it pulls up a, a full, almost a full screen version of that color and all of the details. Uh, this particular one, Generosity, is from uh, the Color Marketing Group 2016 European Forecast. Um, some other things you see down here, and, and we'll get into these uh, a little more in depth, but uh, quickly, uh, this app uh, allows you to save colors or uh, collections of colors uh, to palettes. Uh, a palette is just a way of organizing your color sets by client, by project, by room, um, uh, whichever you like. Uh, the benefit, one of the benefits of our system is it's cloud-based. So you can create as many palettes as you'd like, as well as um, put as many colors within a palette as you'd like. Um, it also allows you to attach a image, um, something that you take with your smart device's camera. Um, another thing here is, I scroll down, you see uh, the schemes. Um, that base color, generosity up there, you now see coordinating and complementary colors. These are based on uh, science, based on the color wheel, um, uh, and just mathematical formulas there so you can see what uh, types of coordinating and complementary colors work with that base color uh, generosity in this case. Um, you'll see that schemes button uh, kind of near the top here right above that first uh, cross reference. To the right of that you'll see inspirations. I'm going to click on that. Inspirations are uh, professionally designed interiors that use um, that particular base color generosity in this case. Um, these are primarily commercial uh, interiors done by professionals. Um, so, you know, it's a great way uh, to see what professionals, uh, other professionals have done with these colors. It's a great way to jumpstart ideas. I have this color. I have no idea what to do with it. This could give you some leads and um, some uh, pointers in the right direction. So this is our inspirations. So going back here, you'll see uh, back to our navigation in the upper right. Um, 
The second uh, from the right is a sorting feature. Um, you can sort whatever search you uh, perform or whatever library you're in. You can sort by name, by code, by lightness, or by saturation. So if I select code here, um, you know, the code is plus yellow or 85% cacao, acid twist, almost there. Um, great naming, CMG. Love your names. Um, so, so you can, uh, you know, just a different way to view, um, uh, view your, your uh, search results. Uh, the other icon up there in the upper right, this uh, funnel looking thing, um, this can also filter out to just display your neutrals, your basics, or your vibrance within that library selected. So I clicked on neutrals here. I can select on vibrance. And, you know, as always, you can scroll down, you can click on any one of these, and uh, Blue Elephant comes up. And let's see. You can also go back to the all shades. So the libraries, now we, we've talked a little bit about the navigation. To the left of that, where you see choose product collection, all color marketing group. Uh, this is where you select your library. Um, at the top of any of these library screens or collection screens, you'll always see the option of all products. Uh, so, for instance, right now we have all color marketing group collections and we have the forecast from the 2014 uh, to current available. Uh, as I mentioned, too, we'll be adding 2013, 2012, and, and previous years. Uh, those will always be there. Um, another thing, I, I clicked on the product button in the upper left-hand corner. This also, not only displays the color marketing group um, uh, libraries, but includes all of the uh, variable Color Muse public app libraries, which you can see is, is pretty vast. We have uh, apparel, carpet, uh, flooring, hard surfaces, leather, paint, uh, textiles, a little bit of everything. Uh, paint, for instance, I can click on paint, pulls up all the vendors available. So if you have a specific vendor you'd like to work with, you can select, you know, Benjamin Moore, and you'll see the three color libraries or fan decks that we currently have in the system. You can manually select one, or if it doesn't matter, you can select that all Benjamin Moore. And we can go back to our grid mode here so you can see. And, you know, these are just alphabetical uh, by code at this time till we perform a scan. Um, and to what I just did there, this choose paint collection in the upper left where it says paint, uh, arrow Ben Moore, I click on that, that brings me back to that menu. And then the paint in the upper left, that icon, I click on that and it brings me up a level to view all of the paint libraries. So you can see we have quite a few, we're adding, uh, more and more, um, uh, specialty paints, regional paints, uh, as well as uh, European, uh, Latin American, and um, hopefully Asian pretty soon here. Um, let's see, so that's the reference libraries. Now let's, going back up here, actually, let's select all paint here, and uh, connect our device. How about we do that? Um, the device, it it's pairs via Bluetooth, a couple things to remember before you connect it um, on your smart device, make sure your Bluetooth is on, make sure you're connected uh, to the internet. Uh, at the bottom of the screen here, you see the target icon and then next to it, connect device to scan. For Android versions, it's that same target icon, but it's in the upper right hand corner. So I click that connect to scan. Uh, the app prompts me to press the wake button on my device. That's just the only button on the very top. Um, it then, the blue light flashes quickly. The app asks you to press the button again to confirm. Press the button again to confirm. It will initialize the device and make that pair uh, connection. Uh, so moving forward, if you only use one device, um, one color muse, it will always remember that and you'll just have to hit that wake button one time. Um, 
calibrate. Uh, every time you launch the app and pair it, it asks you to calibrate. Uh, there's a calibration cap on the ColorMuse uh, device, the color scanner, uh, that simply screws on and off. Um, just make sure this is in place before you hit that calibrate button on the uh, bottom of the screen here. Hit calibrate, it just takes a second or two. Calibration successful. Re please remove before scanning. Okay. And uh, conveniently, um, the back end of your color scanner has that same um, screw thread, so you can uh, safely secure that calibration cap there. Um, now, I always prefer, uh, this is personal preference, the list view here. Um, and right now, a, to perform the scan, um, all scanning and uh, triggers of the scanning device are done from the app. Uh, you'll see the bottom uh, screw. Uh, bottom of the screen where it now says uh, it previously said you know press to connect the device now it says color uh, scan color using the device so what you can do is firmly press the uh, device against any surface both uh, textured surfaces as well as smooth finishes and hit the scan color um, and you'll see the results and I'm just scanning a, a color chip here on my desk here and it pulls up the closest matches uh, Closest match is a Caporal, second closest Pratt and Lambert's, then a Ben Moore, Mythic Paint, a Sherwin Williams, and, and, and so on and so on. Um, please note that screen your display on the screen may vary uh, from device to device. Uh, the same situation you run into when you're viewing colors uh, on your computer screen, on your iPhone, um, an Android tablet, um, they're all a little bit different but uh, assured the content, the matches are accurate. Um, we uh, build our libraries uh, very methodically using, uh, for paint, libraries using a reference grade uh, spectrophotometer, um, as well as uh, some of the other libraries use um, some calculated um, processing with high, RG, high res RGB. Um, imagery so uh, to work with our system so as you get in here so you see the current uh, results here so I'm just gonna click on uh, this top one for Caporal here um, you can see too you know just like before the name the vendor the collection it's in um, cross-referencing the inspirations um, one benefit too, let's say it comes up with uh, this Caporal and you would like to cross-reference it with a Valspar paint color. Um, that very first uh, color bar under uh, Schemes and Inspirations, uh, kind of near the, the top of the screen now, uh, color reference, if you click on that button, that color reference, it then takes that original Caporal color, that band across the top from the scan we did. Now, you can click on that library button at the top and scroll down. I want a Valspar color, and I'm gonna do the Ultra Premium. There, uh, Jekyll, to, Jekyll Club Cherokee Rust. That's the closest match to that Caporal um, uh, color we scanned. So I'm gonna click on that the details and I'm gonna add it to a palette uh, I have a palette called the CMG living room it was just the last palette I was in so I'm just a tap on that now this color is saved to that palette or the collection um, uh, of that uh, CMG living room that I'm renovating perhaps um, again to the inspirations on the right hand side you'll see uh, colors that bring up that base scan that we did and uh, color sets, color palettes. Um, great idea starters. Um, really that this scanner is aimed at saving you time, saving you resources, saving you trips back and forth to um, a paint store or a, a material um, retailer or distributor. Um, it's meant to get you close, get you within the range and then you can work on uh, what you do best based on your skills, your experience. Um, this is not a tool to replace 
interior designers or color professionals by any means. It is simply to save you time on the front end of the project, uh, get you to the color range, that color, um, uh, yeah, I guess the color range uh, quicker and faster instead of uh, looking through this wall of uh, material and uh, sample books that you're all very familiar with. Um, so what I did, I saved it to my palette. So now I'm gonna, let's go explore the main menu a little bit. Uh, in the upper left hand corner, I can just click back out till I see kind of those three lines or um, someone here calls it the hamburger icon. I can click on that, that really, uh, that expands our main menu. And um, so far we've been in the find products uh, area. The find inspirations, this is a different way to get to uh, the inspirations you've already seen. If I click on that, it just uh, randomly generates a color and, and, and shows a palette. But I can also see scan using my device. So let's say I have uh, a color here. Let's see a bright blue here. And I'm gonna hit scan there. And what it does, it comes up with that scan color as well as all of those inspirations. Uh, but you'll also see some new details here. It uh, shows it's a scan, the date it was captured, it gives me the hex code, the RGB, the D50 lab, HSB, and LCH uh, values. Um, this is uh, something definitely a value uh, to the CMG and, and you know your um, color work that you do here. Uh, I can auto generate a new color. I just clicked on that generate new inspiration color. It uh, does the same same thing. Uh, you notice the details change because uh, these are based off of high resolution RGB uh, photos so it will display that base or the dominant RGB color. You see the values there and then the hex code. Uh, if I wanted to have a, that additional LAB values and, and the other details I would have to perform a scan. Uh, back to our main menu here, my palettes. You'll see the three palettes I have here. Uh, once again, you'll, you'll see a different view mode. You can change it to grid or detail. Uh, the CMG living room, um, that's our, our lovely conference room actually, that photo you see here. Uh, I'm going to click on that. One of the benefits of the palettes, uh, palette functionality here is the ability to uh, take a reference photo, a before and after photo, something that you as the user can identify with that project or that client. And uh, to, you see me scan here. Um, these are just placed in, you know, in order. Um, yeah, you saw that magic. What I did there, I'm just pinching in and out on the screen so I can uh, move things around uh, shrink that grid view if I want to see all the colors. But if I scroll down here, I can, you know, you'll see that add an image. And I can simply click on that, use my camera. Nothing too exciting. Is this my camera? That's part of what I'm looking at now. My lovely office in the Ames Marshmallow. And Nelson. I think it's Nelson. Anyway. So I can add that, and you'll see that image added right to that living room palette. So now I can also, oh, it looks like there's some duplicates here um, So in the menu. So we'll have to talk to our developers to get that fixed. I'm going to go out and in and see if that clears it up. Yes, it does. Okay, bug fix here. So that's one of the benefits of working uh, real closely with our development team. They sit uh, literally two desks away. So as we see bugs like this, and as you, if you develop, uh, find any bugs, please let us know right away. We'll get them fixed. Another benefit too, if there are libraries that are not in here that you would like, please let me know. We'll get those in. Um, within about 60 days, uh, or by the end of the year, uh, 2016 here, uh, we will have the ability for a brand or a manufacturer to upload and manage their own libraries within the app. Uh, so that's something we're actively working on pretty aggressively, so that will be coming. Um, so building this palette here, another benefit too, we added the image scan using device. 
If you have a bunch of colors that you just want to build a palette now, this is a great way to do that. Um, scan one color. Scroll back down to the scan another color here. And you'll see those two scans coming right up here. And let's see, I can delete the palette, I can rename the palette. Um, and another big benefit too, I can share the palette. What that function does, if you create a palette, it uh, clicking on that share function uh, generates a unique URL that you can then post directly to Pinterest, LinkedIn, any of the social media networks, as well as uh, through text, through email, um, or through a browser. It just creates that. So you can share that with a client, look, someone looking for feedback, um, a colleague to look at something. Um, it really has uh, all of that color information data that you, that you see. Um, one uh, unique thing about the CMG and their proprietary data is we have filters in place to um, currently not allow any CMG forecast or trend data to be shared publicly. Uh, to do that, please contact Sharon um, for authorization. Uh, uh, to do that, it's really part of the benefit of the CMG is being a member and having access to those libraries and keeping that within our group. Um, so as you see in this palette, I have a variety. I have a Ben Moore color. It looks like an NCS color. Um, ah, that's another thing I'm, I'm going to go back to. Part of the benefit of the CMG, this app and you people uh, with access to this app are the only ones that not only have access to the public color muse offering which contains uh, materials finishes uh, apparel um, all those libraries you saw it also contains the cmg uh, forecast and trend data from current uh, to previous it also includes ncs notations munsell uh, notations uh, ral and british standard colors um, we're currently working on getting Pantone. Um, uh, ask me about that. That's a different story. We're working on that, though, uh, because I know that's uh, something of interest uh, uh, to you there. But for now, we have all the other reference libraries. So that's why you see that NCS color. Um, you see a couple uh, color marketing group colors, the image, a RAL, a bear, some more color marketing group, and, and some scans. So now, if you notice, I'm going to hit the share palette. And what it does, it generates that unique URL. But because uh, of the confidentiality and uh, sensitivity of the CMG data, you get this notice basically saying um, no uh, members are allowed to communicate colors without authorization. And uh, yeah, you can read it when you get in the app. I'm going to hit I agree. And what it does, it will then um, save this palette. And I'm just going to email it to myself so I can show you uh, what it will look like. Right here. That's not set up. We'll, we'll do that later. But uh, basically, well, we got to do it now, don't we? Okay, I agree. Save it to AirDrop. I can do it this way. If this works. Let's see if we can do it this way. Save it to my photos. Okay, let me do a separate. Uh, video here on, on the sharing function because I really want to show you what that will look like here. So moving along here, um, uh, the well just briefly on the sharing, uh, when you share that uh, it shows you that unique URL that you can open in a browser or, or a, a window uh, wherever you are and uh, you'll see the colors, the color data, any of the CMG colors will be removed um, due to that disclaimer you just saw 
And then also, um, if you scroll to the very bottom, you'll see a, the ability to export an ASE file or Adobe Swatch Exchange file. Um, what that will do is create a file out of the colors in your palette, you know, minus any CMG colors, uh, that you can then import into uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, any of the, the Adobe products. Uh, so that's a huge benefit and uh, keeps things streamlined uh, and moving along for you in, in the work that you do. Um, back to the main menu here, Quick Inspect. And you'll see, now it says connect here at the bottom, uh, the device with five minutes of inactivity, it times out. So it's just gonna ask me to connect, press the wake button, it recognizes it and uh, performs that pair. Once again, it asks me to calibrate. So I hit calibrate. And now I'm in the quick inspect. And the quick inspect function is really a uh, introductory uh, to QC. It basically allows you to take two scans and it will display the delta E values as well as RGB, LAB, and, and so on uh, values of the two scans. Uh, so I'm going to click on scan my standard here. I'm going to scan a, a sample. And you can see the delta E is uh, 0.38 and, or you know, basically no color difference. Uh, at the bottom You'll see it defaults to the RGB. You can also toggle to LAB, LCH, or HSB file. Uh, so this is a great way to scan in a standard and then basically scan sample. Scan sample. Scan sample. Let's do a few more of them. You can see when I'm really off here. I scan something totally different. 30 delta E, that is not even close. Okay. So there, something uh, a little more manageable here, 0.53 delta E. Uh, so with that, with each of these, you can also click on one of those details of that quick inspect. Uh, and I clicked on the, the uh, sample here, just uh, the left screen, and I can now, I can save that to a palette. Um, I see all of those details right there. Another benefit here, uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you see this history button can click on history. This shows me the history or the scanning I, I just performed. It'll uh, keep track of that um, over time. You can manually delete it and clean it out. It also, in the upper right hand corner, um, gives you the ability to export that into a CSV file um, that'll give you all of those color color values and that color data. Uh, so that's a, it's a great um, you know add to our, our system as well. Um, Another benefit here too, let's say, uh, I'm going back to our main menu now, under Quick Inspect you see Scan History. Uh, the, these excluding the uh, Quick Inspect scans, because those are saved in their own history. This is your, your basic scan history. You can see that the colors I've scanned just a bit ago, last week, it gives you a time, time stamp here. If, for instance, I see Let's see, this color right here, I know this was a standard I had saved last week or I have saved in a palette. Um, actually, let's do that. I'm going to go right to my palettes because I have one called standards. These are the standards I have scanned in. So I'm going to click on this upper left one here. Um, you can see the different values uh, as I mentioned and now if I scroll all the way down, you'll see load into quick inspect. I'm going to select that so it loads that uh, standard uh, right into quick inspect. So I am ready to scan away here. Whoops, sorry, long sample here. But you can see I have hit uh, was a little off. This is a little better here. So I can then use that sample palette or the standard palette, for instance, to keep all my standards, I can name them any way I'd like. I can put notes to any of the individual colors and I can just scan away and it will give me that history file as well. You'll see the, the reddish uh, that I did before um, just a bit ago and now all these scans too. Um, so it's a great way to you know 
maintain some digital integrity. Uh, once again, this is a colorimeter. It's not a, a reference grade spectrophotometer. Um, keep that in mind. Um, but we are performing an instrument agreement instrument agreement and repeatability of about 0.3 delta E. So it's a, a pretty darn good little device here. Uh, so back to our main menu here. Um, we have a uh, managed device. Uh, this shows, you know, the battery. Um, currently the battery on a full charge um, and uh, will take about 4,000 to 5,000 scans on a single charge um, to do that you'll see any micro usb cable um, just plug it into the top let it charge for about 40 45 minutes then you're you're at full uh, we're working on a, a different or a better indicator of battery life um, so stay tuned for that that'll be uh, within the app um, uh, but you're, you're good to go um, once fully charged you'll see the serial number and firmware version on this if you'd like to you know, manually calibrate the white point, you can do that or disconnect the device. Uh, the disconnect device is important if you're using an iPhone and an iPad uh, as the scanner can only be paired to one device at a time. Um, that, that seems to be uh, some uh, troubleshooting uh, when, when people are, are switching between an iPhone and an iPad. Uh, why can't I connect to my iPad? Well, you're already paired with your iPhone. So, you know, go in, manually disconnect it. Then you'll be set. Um, another troubleshooting tip, uh, the wake button. If it just will not pair, if you've turned on and off your Bluetooth on your smart device, it still won't pair. Um, once in a great while, the device gets hung up. To perform a hard reset, uh, simply press the wake button and hold it down for about 15 seconds and then release it, and then start again. And uh, nine times out of 10, that'll take care of your uh, connectivity challenge. Uh, support, we also have, uh, right now, it's going to the Color Muse app uh, support page right here. Um, you can see there's a variety of user guides, general frequently asked questions if you need to submit a ticket, um, and some technical specifications as well. Um, that's always available uh, to you and uh, as well as I am feel free to reach out to me directly my name is John Kowalski let me leave you my email address it's j-o-h-n dot k-o-w-a-l-s-k-i at variable i-n-c dot com and uh, or, or you can uh, get to me through, through Sharon as well um, but uh, I know this was pretty uh, informal, and uh, but I just wanted to walk through the question or through all of the uh, major functions and functionality of the CMG Colors uh, Color Muse app here. Um, and I look forward to talking to you live. If you have any questions, reach out, and uh, we'll, we'll try to create uh, uh, more of these videos over time. Um, I really want to show you what that share uh, palette function looks like, so I will. Uh, work on that and uh, enjoy.